Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We wanted to actually take a look at the plants that we keep. We are fairly new to keeping plants and so I wanted to give you the perspective of someone who's not an expert in plants, but we've got some plants here that are relatively easy to grow and we wanted to share that with you in case you're thinking about getting into plants and you're looking for something that's not going to cause you a lot of problems. So stay tuned and we're going to show you what we've got. All right, so I wanted to start at this tank because there's a couple plants here that I think would be relatively easy for a new plant keeper. By the way, this is a tank, if you go back in our 500 subscriber thank you, which happened a little while ago, a month or so ago, we haven't forgotten about you. Uh, this is the tank that is going to fulfill that, uh, that promise to put some fish in here that you guys want to see. And based on a lot of the suggestions, we felt we could do a planted tank. And so the plants are in here, we got to get the fish in, and that will be coming soon. But this tank also is a good example of some plants that are really easy to grow. And so in this 29, we have in the, the center here, this is uh, water wisteria. And this started out as a very small plant and it has just gone absolutely crazy. And one of the things that you'll see as this plant starts to grow is it actually starts to send out runners all along the bottom. And you can see that here and it was just one little plant in the back and now it's really starting to take off and the only thing that we put in this tank to start is some easy green liquid fertilizer and i've got a review of that product it's fantastic it really helps a lot i will put a card up in the uh, top hand corner of the video right now so that is definitely one i think a lot of people could do well on with just some liquid fertilizer i don't have any co2 in this tank uh, this is gravel, just regular black gravel, so no special substrate. The light on top is a Phoenix Stingray, and it's a 29 gallon, so it's a, you know, it's a decently deep tank, and the light is plenty sufficient to allow this thing to grow. So this is definitely a plant. The water wisteria, if you have a chance to get that as a new plant keeper, it's probably going to do uh, fairly well. At least it has for us. The other plant that does really well for us is this one right here and that is Crip Wendetti, and we've got this in a number of tanks. This was a very tiny plant that was in our five and a half gallon, and it got huge like this, and so we took it out and put it in this tank, and it's doing really great. Again, we have the uh, Easy Green. Again, it's just regular black gravel and the Phoenix Stingray Light, and this plant generally grows in just about any tank we put it in, so a uh, very easy plant. I like its appearance. It's kind of, I uh, can get quite large. You, you, you can break it apart over by the roots and plant new plants. Uh, the nice thing about the water wisteria is you can cut off a stem, float it. When you start to see roots grow, like you're starting to see right there, you can plant those roots if you want, and then you're going to get what you see down here. So these are definitely two of the easier plants. Uh, this plant over here is a sword. I don't remember what kind of sword it was. We got it from a local fish club. It's there. It's surviving. It's looking okay. Uh, we have hit or miss luck with our swords. The one thing that we have to be careful of is uh, when you have sword plants in a tank that's got bristle nose, sometimes they will be a little bit hard on the sword plants. They're not as, the leaves aren't as thick, but this one's doing okay even though we've got two well, smaller bristle nose in there. Uh, but I don't know if it's necessarily a good beginner plant, at least for me it's can be like i said hit or miss but certainly the water wisteria and the uh, crip wendetti definitely good options so i'm going to go ahead and take you to another place in our fish room another plant that's been pretty good for us and it's the one right here in the center is anubius uh, all types of anubius have grown fairly well they don't grow fast and if you use too much light they're prone to getting some algae on the leaves which rams horn snails will more than take care of as you can see here all along the substrate this happens to be in our peacock gudgeon tank but it's been growing well it's a relatively low light plant uh, in this tank i think at one point i did put in some root tabs but it's been a while maybe over a year but this plant this tank will sometimes also get some liquid fertilizer but you can see here, it's a, it's a good plant. Like I said, it's not going to grow fast, but most of the time, most beginners will do okay with it. The other plant that I think it's just, if you really just want something to grow, this stuff at the top, hornwort is, it grows like a weed. We 
started out, we've got a bunch here in this peacock gudget tank, as you can see. That started out as basically just a little tiny piece. And it all, all the horn we have originated from this Superette bristle nose tank. And this tank, it was literally, we got it with some cherry shrimp. It was one little tiny branch or piece and it didn't grow for a long time. And then all of a sudden it started to grow and then started to branch off and pretty soon we had a bunch of it. And I pull stuff out of this tank just about every week and feed it to fish that will eat it. Uh, tinfoil barbs like to eat it, severums will eat it, uh, some cichlids will eat it. We have some tilapia that will eat this stuff, but you can see here this tank is overrun with it. It's okay because I've got cherry shrimp in there and they're really enjoying that. But you can see there's a lot here. If we go over to the uh, regular bristle nose tank, there's a bunch in here. And again, it's great because we have a ton of red cherry shrimp in this tank. But you can see it's a lot. And so we do, uh, we do pull a lot of this stuff out just to keep it down because it does block the light of other plants that we have in the tank. And it's in just about every tank that we have uh, here. We can see it in with our Thrichthys maculopinus. And if I go around the fish room, it's up there. It's in there. I have it in the multi tank here. If we come down here into this 20, there is some up here. This is where, this is really just a uh, quarantine tank, but it's here as well. If we go over to the Oscar tank, you would see it in there, up in our cichlid tank. So basically it really is everywhere. And one of the nice things about this plant is it will use up nitrates. It, like I said, it will grow super fast and the lighting, it's growing best under the uh, Phoenix stingrays, but it's, it's really grows. It grows and it sucks up a lot of the nitrates in the tank, which is a good thing. That's why we have it in so many of our tanks. And like I said, when it gets to be too much, we wind up just feeding it to the fish that will eat it. Another type of plant that'll grow like crazy is guppy grass. Uh, this is a guppy tank, believe it or not. And one of the nice things about this stuff, kind of like the hornwort, is it will, it'll take a tank over if you want it to. And we can see here, we've got the guppy grass. And there's another Anubius here. But this stuff is great for a couple reasons, and there's a couple reasons why we have it in this tank. Reason number one is when our guppies have fry, they get kind of caught up in the guppy grass, and then so the adults can't eat them. And so if you're looking for some type of vegetation that's gonna help protect fry from predation, this is a great option, guppy grass. The hornwort that I just mentioned is a fantastic option for that as well. Uh, also, both of these are great if you are trying to raise shrimp. And so they'll have places to kind of hang on to, places to hide if you've got fish in, in the tank and you don't want the shrimplets to get eaten. So all of this definitely helps. In fact, there is a little tiny fry. I don't know if we can see it right there. Oh, just went behind the guppy grass. It's in there. But again, makes it a little bit easier for them to survive with such a thick group of guppy grass. All right, the last plant I wanted to mention is this right here. It's water sprite. Uh, this one, again, it's we have pretty good luck with it. Uh, it's a, like most of what we've mentioned, it does better if you do some liquid fertilizers. But on this tank, we've just got an old fluorescent light. Substrate is just regular old pool filter sand. Uh, no root tabs or anything like that because this is primarily a water column feeding plant anyway. So a little bit of easy green uh, fertilizer and it stays in pretty good shape. If there's any downside to this plant, every once in a while it will be stubborn, at least in terms of its rooting. Uh, you can float this plant just like you can float, float the uh, wisteria. Uh, but again, it's, it's a nice plant. It's got very thin leaves. Uh, some fish will eat it. You know, again, you have to do your homework in terms of the size or, or the types of fish that you plan to keep with plants. But in terms of growth and ease of, you know, uh, being able to grow it and make it look good, this is a pretty good plant for beginners, I think. We've had pretty good luck with it. The last plant I wanted to mention was Java Fern. And this is one where we have it in some of our tanks. Here you can see it in a 20 gallon with some barred goodyads. Uh, this is a plant for us that 
we've probably got it in five or six tanks. It doesn't really grow all that fast for us. Again, what we're doing is very, very low tech. There's a Phoenix Stingray on here. We've got just plain old black gravel, and that's about all we have in any of the tanks that have this particular plant. Uh, in those tanks, we do some, depending on the plants, we will put in some liquid fertilizers. This tank gets some liquid fertilizers. Uh, I believe there is, we put root tabs in this tank for this Java fern, uh, in the Java ferns that we have, but it's a good plant for us. It doesn't grow particularly fast, and we found that after we plant it, sometimes we'll get some die off, but uh, it does do a pretty good job. It is pretty hardy. All right, everyone, so I hope you enjoyed that. Again, just wanted to give you a little bit of background as to some of the plants that we think are super easy to keep, plants that I think would be great for a beginner and would allow you some success early on. So if you like this video, share it, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.